So the first deleted scene to talk about is the introduction of Renard, played by Robert Carlyle. Now, one of the entertaining things about the film is that the audience is led along to believe that Robert's character is the real villain of the piece. But those that know the story know that he wasn't. But what we had to do is really to establish him and, and try and give him a really big entrance into the film so that people would immediately think, ah, uh ah, -uh, this is the villain. So we shot this scene and we looked at it and we thought, this is, this is not very impressive entrance if this is going to be the great villain of the film. And then we thought, well, he doesn't appear again for at least another 25 minutes where he does have a very good entrance. So why are we bothering to do this little entrance when there's a much bigger entrance coming up later on? So that was one reason why we wanted to cut it out. The other reason was we thought it would be nicer really not to know who the cigarette girl was working for. Once you know she's working for Renard, a whole early part of the mystery of the story, we think, was goes away, evaporates. And it also meant that the audience wasn't ahead of Bond, which is always another quite a good idea when you're doing this kind of thriller, is that the, the protagonist, the leading man, should really be ahead of the game and not catching up with the audience. So we wanted the audience to be in the same position as Bond and not really know what was happening. And once we decided to do it, we never, ever missed it. And we do, as you'll see later on in the movie, give uh, Renard a really fabulous entrance into the film, much better than anything that was in this scene. What's his name? Our friend from MI6. James Bond. One of M's more resourceful teen soldiers. He could identify me. Then I suppose a death is in order. His. When the time comes, I trust you won't let me down. Until then, let us toast this James Bond. You're in his hands now. The second deleted scene is the attempt that Bond makes to save King. I had a big problem. Um, with the opening of the movie, and it became clear the problem when I first previewed it. The way the film was originally structured, the Bilbao scene was originally the pre-title sequence. When I previewed the film, the Bilbao scene really just didn't cut it. People thought, what? That's the opening of a Bond film? So I knew I'd made a mistake, and so what I knew was also that that Thames chase was a really fabulous scene. And so I then had to do some quick thinking because I decided to make that whole sequence, Bilbao and the Thames chase, the beginning of the film, the pre-title of the film, so that when Pierce falls on the Millennium Dome, then you cut to the titles. Well, that meant you couldn't have a title sequence or pre-title sequence on for 20, 25 minutes. So I had to do some very, very tough cutting in that area to give us a real stand-up, grandstandy opening. We read law at Oxford together. I always knew he'd conquer the world. <laughs> Care for a drink? Yes, thank you. He's a man of great integrity. Hmm? Who buys stolen reports for three million pounds. Well, contrary to what you may believe, 007, the world is not populated by madmen who can hollow out volcanoes, fill them with big-breasted women, and threaten the world with nuclear annihilation. It only takes one. Any leads on a sniper? No, the hotel room was clean. Professional job. Is that the stolen report? Yes, classified from the Russian Atomic Energy Department. Assessing the millennium bug threat to the nuclear arsenal in the former Soviet Republic. What would King want this for? Well, he was led to believe the document was a secret report. Identifying the terrorists who had attacked a new oil pipeline he's building in the region. When he discovered it concerned nuclear weapons, he turned it over to me immediately. But it doesn't exactly explain why someone would want me out of their office alive.
king. The money. We haven't finished checking it yet. Well, I'm sure it's all there. If you can't trust MI6, who can you trust? King, stop! Stop! Um, the next little deleted scene is really one shot. It's the Aston Martin DB5 approaching the castle. Another scene that came under the surgeon's knife a bit is, is the scene with Serena Scott Thomas and Pierce. For those of you who are interested in the minutia of uh, Bond, especially in some of the lines, in the ancestry of some of the jokes, the line where Bond takes his sling and tosses onto the knight in armor saying, what I do for England, now that line has appeared three times. It appeared in A Trader for Thunderball, it appeared in You Only Live Twice, and reappeared in The World Is Not Enough, only to get cut out. I need a clean bill of health. You have to clear me for duty. James, that wouldn't really be... Ethical. Practical. Smart. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just uh, skirt the issue, shall we? Hmm. You'd have to promise to call me. Oh, yes. <coughs> this time? <sighs> Whatever the doctor orders. And I suppose if you stayed in constant contact... Of course. If you showed sufficient stamina, set out all kinds of... Strenuous activity. I might be open to that. Well, I want you to stay on top of things, of course. we do for England. Carry on. The next couple of deletions refer to Q's lab. One of the challenges of doing a bond is to find funny things for Q to be doing in his laboratory. One of the challenges of all the Bond films is to find great new toys, new devices that, you know, we can put into the narrative. And it's very, very difficult. And it's always fun with Q to try and get little jokes, little throwaway jokes, and to try things out. But, of course, some of them don't work. A lot of people spend a lot of time trying to figure them out, reading cutting-edge magazines, but then, in this case, the cutting-edge was the film onto the cutting-room floor. <laughs> 